So, our next speaker is Patrick Hurley, who's going to be talking about the Freedom Amendment. Thank philosophy essay on the philosophy of freedom. I'm about to try to distill it into five minutes and 20 <laughs> slides. It's going to go wrong. Along the way, I'm going to talk about Elon Musk. I'm going to be talking about all of the kind of the Californian tech bros and the libertarians that, that kind of they, they think they have a monopoly on freedom. They think they have a monopoly on the liberty of the individual. I'm going to make an argument that they're wrong. I'm going to make an argument that actually the post-war social democratic government that we all grew up with is the best guarantor of the individual liberty of the individual. The centrist dad, in other words, is the, 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 the saviour of individual freedom. The concept I'm going to be talking about is this thing called the freedom envelope. And the freedom envelope at the start of time was really tiny. Because the freedom envelope is the area of life about which it makes sense to talk about freedom. Before the telephone was invented, nobody thought of themselves as being unfree to speak to people hundreds of miles away. It just wasn't possible, it just wasn't a thing that could be done. Once the telephone was invented, it suddenly made, started to make sense to talk about being free to speak to people. And so the freedom envelope grew in size. Same thing with antibiotics. Before antibiotics, it didn't make sense to talk about being free from bacterial infection. Once antibiotics were invented, it did, and the freedom envelope grew in size again. But crucially, freedom was being restricted by people who had the power over others. The internet, when that was invented, the World Wide Web in the late 80s, early 90s, once that's invented, suddenly it becomes possible to communicate in ways that which it hadn't been possible before, before, and the freedom envelope grew again. But what if all of these inventions and innovations were being controlled? What if they were all being controlled by people who wanted to restrict access to them? And that's why it becomes an issue of freedom. Imagine, we've all seen people like this on, on Church Street and you know, getting money. Imagine if it actually was possible to levitate in reality and the next iteration of the expansion of the freedom envelope was that you could actually levitate. But imagine if it was controlled by people like this. Imagine if Mark Zuckerberg bought the levitation company and said, only people who pay me X amount of money or who will agree to have all of their personal information shared will have the ability to levitate. And that's because there are power relations here. And it's the rich and powerful that can control access to the new things which give people freedom. They've got their thumb on the scale. And so what's needed is an honest broker, someone who can mediate between your regular punter who just wants to be, have the freedom to levitate, it's nothing special, and the person who is actually controlling it. And my argument is that it was the post-war social democratic state that expanded the freedom envelope of its time by bringing access to more innovations to more people. And if we can re rehabilitate and get that, that thought back in the 2020s and 2030s, we can expand it again. So, summing up, levitation, freedom envelope, power imbalances, centrist doubts. My fundamental point is that in the post-war UK, 
Harold Wilson has been the one person, more than anybody else, that's expanded personal freedom, and we need to have more centrist dads in the world. Thanks for listening. <laughs>